Hi everybody, this is Kelly. Uh, welcome to KO Airbrushing and Design's first tutorial. Uh, the one that we're going to do today by request of the viewers is going to be uh, uh, a three-part chrome uh, tutorial. So the first one that we're going to do today is going to be a basic chrome, uh, which doesn't mean basic basic chrome, but basic shapes. Uh, the next one that we'll do will be a more uh, intricate piece where we'll actually do chrome on chain link and the third piece that we're going to do is going to be a little bit more in depth yet and that'll be uh, doing chrome on a skull. So the one we're going to do today is actually going to be um, just three basic shapes. So we're going to work with a, a ball, a cone, and a cube and we'll set up the chrome, show you exactly why I'm doing it the way I am, how to pick out a light source, um, and all that fun stuff. So yeah, let me just switch the camera around here and we'll get right to it. Okay, now we're moved over to our painting area here. Now what I've got here is a piece of spray mask and I'm gonna use that. Uh, I've already cut the stencil. You can use your regular circle templates or roll of tape or anything you want, as long as you don't mind getting some paint on it. And, and you can use this technique uh, in any medium too. So basically what I'm gonna do here, I've got my external piece. This is the piece that I want to use, this is the outside part. And this stuff does like to stick to you, so and I'm just going to place that here where I want it. I could tape around this and block it off, but I'm not worried about overspray in this case. Uh, we're more worried about doing the chrome, which is going to be inside the ball, and that's all we really need to worry about. And that looks like it's actually going to stick pretty good. So this stuff is really good to use because it does have a self-adhesive back. Um, the only problem with it is, well, it's not really a problem, but it's made for running through um, a vinyl cutter, a plotter, <coughs> and cutting it that way. So obviously a lot of people aren't going to have those. They're fairly pricey units. Um, crickets aren't too bad. I mean, you can get into a cricket for 300 bucks Canadian, which is not too bad. <coughs> but in this case, that's what I'm using just because it's easier for me to make multiples of the same thing over and over again. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing three different shapes. So the circle, a cone, and a cube. And it's just much, much easier for me for doing the demos for you guys to... Uh, to just zap them out on my cutter. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, and what we'll do here is we'll grab a charcoal pencil, is you need to pick yourself a light source. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say the light source is coming from over to the left, but it's actually going to be on this side of the ball. So it's going to be in the same, similar viewing angle to what we are, except it'll be up and, and to the left. And in this case, I am just doing a very simple chrome, so I'm using three colors. I'm using blue, white, and black. Um, your blue is going to be your upper edge, so we'll lay that in. So this is, this is your sky color. It's a clear day. Nice blue sky. And you just want to lay that down and fade it out at the bottom. And you can make that pretty dark at the top if you want. I will just for the sake of the video. And I'm also using a quick connect on my brushes. So there we go. We've got our base color laid in. Darken that a little bit over here too. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with the blue. So we'll switch over now to a black. And the other thing we're going to do at this point in time is look at how the reflection from the ground is going to be in the ball. So in this case, because we are going to be looking at it from just slightly above the center line of the ball, 
So if we want to put in a horizon line, um, what I'm using is probably a horizon line about in here. So you're kind of looking down on it. So you can do this with a piece of paper, with a piece of tape, whatever you want. So I just need to figure out exactly how big of a piece I need. And what I'm going to do is because we're looking down on it, I want to curve that reflection. Let's see if that's big enough. Oh, that's just big enough. That's perfect. And just pull that down enough so that it's inside the edge of the circle on both sides. Uh, and I did, yeah, no, that's right, but it's wrong. <laughs> I need the other piece. Give me one second here. So what I want to do is I want to use this piece, actually. And I just want to pull that down. I don't care about the top edge. That doesn't matter. I'm actually not going to have as much of a reflection on there as I thought. Let me just redo that. Do another one. I'm going to make that reflection just a little bit bigger. Now we can go. There we go. That's what I wanted, right like that. And I'm just using. Everything I'm doing here is actually on a piece of steel, so I'm using magnets to hold down my stencils. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can leave the stencil loose, but this way you don't have to worry about it moving around too much. Like I said, now I'm going to switch over to the black. <coughs> and basically what I want to do here is I want to start Laying in that horizon line. And that's exactly what this is. This is this is the horizon line that the ball is reflecting from behind you. And the easiest way to think of it when you're doing chrome is to think of a mirror. Because that's that's what chrome is. So it's gonna see everything around it. So in this case, I just went with a, a rough cut, so it's going to kind of look like there's mountains on the opposite side of you. And then I like to make that fairly dark right at the horizon. And like I said, I'm just using three colors to do this, so it's just going to be the blue, the black, And then the other thing you want to do is leave a little bit of a, a lighter area down a little bit closer to the bottom. Like you don't have to completely darken that in. You just leave it like that. And this gives you an underglow just by doing that. Like I said, this is very simple, so it's only going to take a few minutes to do this. Okay, so we'll take this off now. magnets will come off and there we go we've got a nice horizon line there so now we're also we're also starting to give some structure to the fact that it's a ball it's not a flat piece like it's not just a, a circle it's actually a ball so your horizon line is curving to follow the fact that that's a round object and we'll go over to a white like I said this is very simple it's very quick three colors um, I do have a quick connect to run back and forth on my airbrushes so I can change them very quickly. Now again, we said that the light source is up and to the left. So what we want to do here is we want to pull a highlight and it's we said the sun is going to be on this side of the ball so the light is going to be kind of in here. And now you can use a stencil to do this as well. You don't have to do it freehand. Okay. 
see. So that's going to be our hot spot. And you do not have to make it that big if you don't want to. I like making them a little bigger because it just, again, it adds to the shape of the, of the object. And our hot spot's going to be right in here. And basically, that's it. You don't have to do anything else to simulate chrome. <coughs> second we'll pull this off and we'll throw a bit of a shadow underneath it just to make it so it's not hanging in space but there you go a chrome ball that easy <clears throat> and like I said you can use this technique in any medium so you can brush paint this color pencils marker whatever you want to use and now again because the, the highlight is on this side, our shadow is going to be kind of going out this way, and you don't need to do much. You're just trying to, again, cast a shadow. And there you go. That's pretty much all you need. Now it's sitting on the ground. And I mean, you can extend that out as much as you want. And again, even your shadow is going to be kind of rounded. Not that we're doing shadows, but there you go. <clears throat> so that's how you do a chrome ball. Just that easy. Three colors. Very quick, very easy. Just remember that the chrome is a mirror. So it's going to see anything that's going to have around it. So if you were doing something that was more precise or more advanced, you could put trees and, and all sorts of stuff. Some of the imagery that I've done, like chrome at night, you can do like... Um, lights from other vehicles driving by, uh, street lights, stars, the moon, um, neon lights, anything like that. If it's on the road around the vehicle with the chrome on it, it's going to be reflected in there somewhere. And again, that's something that we will we'll approach more as we get into the more advanced stuff. So for right now, that's the first one. We'll get it, and I'll get set up for the second one here, and I'll be right back. Okay, and onto the cube. So as you can see, I've already got the stencil laid out. Now the cube, you approach the same, but you have to approach it differently as well. And the reason why is because now we have so, uh, we have uh, straight sides, flat sides. Where with the cone, we had uh, a rounded, and same with the ball. So with this one here, this is gonna be a little bit different, but what we're gonna do, is going to be fairly similar. You just have to think about it a little bit more when you're doing a cube. Let's roll my magnets back on. Okay, so what we're going to do this time, you want to run your blue, the entire top is going to be blue, you're going to run your blue down about halfway on the sides. Now again, because this is not a ball or a cone, your horizon line again is going to be in a different area as well. And that's something else that you have to consider as you're working this through. So we'll lay the blue down. And now this time you want to keep the top edge fairly uniform. It's going to be about the same color. And then as you come down the side, you want to slowly start fading that out. And you can go down about... Just about halfway with that. And then the same on this side. And I always try and change my angle when I'm doing a, a box or a cube like this because your angle is slightly different, right? Your horizon line is actually going to follow the contour of that box. Now, the other thing I like to do, so this is just going to take me a second. I've actually cut out a full set of stencils for this. So now the thing I like to do is I'll actually box off the front piece. And this, you can do this with masking tape without any problem. So I'm just going to box this out. So 
So now we've got that edge. Put this other piece on. And we'll have the other edge from the top. And again, like I said, I'm doing this on a on a plotter, but you can do it just with tape. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is because now we have a side, we're using the same light source still. We're still going to be using the same horizon line. So the horizon line is because the box is a little bit squatter, it's going to be a little bit up above, but your light source is still the same. <clears throat> so because of that, the side farthest away is going to be just slightly darker. And by doing this and darkening that up, it's actually going to pop those two lines out as well. So now we just do that just that little bit darker. <clears throat> now we can take those back off again. If you have to use a knife, please be careful. Now you can see how that edge is clearly visible. And same with that one. <clears throat> and actually, I should have left that one in because we can still do that again with the front one. We just won't do it as much. Let's try putting it in the right way. I don't know how to. Can I? that so again we can do this on the front edge too and on this I'm not going to do it anywhere near as much this is just going to be very very subtle and again the reason I'm making it more subtle here is because our light source is coming from this side So there we go, just a very subtle line, just a touch different color. And that's all we need there. Now, for your horizon line in this case, this is going to be a little bit different as well because now your horizon line is going to be fairly flat. So now we'll do it this way. like to still curve it up just a little bit at the edges stop this when it gets to that edge. And I'm also going to put where's my tape? Where's my tape? In this case, because that is so small, I am going to put a piece of tape here because otherwise we will get black overspray up in there. I'm just going to lay a piece of tape mainly on the paper. It doesn't need to be anywhere else. Like that. All right, now we're warming our black. And same thing we did before. I'm going to throw one more magnet in there in the middle. Again, same thing, feed it down from the horizon line. And now uh, here you want to make it darker at the bottom. And you can let that wrap around the corner a little bit. We are going to put that cube face back on the front because we do have to make this one darker again.
great. And you, you can make the bottom edge darker too. It depends on, on what your groundwork is, right? So if it's sitting on something that's, that's tan instead of black, like I'm just using black because it's easy to show, but you can throw some tan into the center of it here just to show more of, a, of an actual ground uh, instead of just being black. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to take this off again because we've got our front face basically done. still use the same stencil on the side as we used on the front. Okay, so now we need the cube. So now you can see how that overspray isn't really going to matter much because now we're going to darken this area up. It's going to be a little bit darker than the front face. And you want to try and match that up with the line that you had on the other side. And you're going to try and follow your perspective. And give me a magnet. Time. Okay, and back to the rock again. And now on this side, you can lay it in pretty heavy. Because, like I said, this side is going to be darker anyway. And again, that's just because it's the side that's away from the light. Very, very simple chrome, but it, it is a very effective way of doing it. You can make it much more intense um, very, very easily. See, we've got really good definition between our sides, <clears throat> which is exactly what we want. And now the only thing that's left to do is put in the highlights. <clears throat> and again, now on this, because of the way our light source is coming in from this side, <clears throat> your highlights are going to be mainly there on those two sides and down that centerpiece. I'm actually not going to do too much down that side because I don't want it to disappear in the light of the background, but just enough so that you can see it. Now if this was on a darker background, like if we had put a shade in behind it first, we could really pop that highlight right there. And then we'll take and run across. And you can do this freehand, or you can do it with a piece of tape if you want. I'll do it with a piece of tape just for the heck of it and show you guys how easy it is to do. Because we're not going all the way over here anyway, we're just going part way. So. There. This is going to be 
catching the light from the angle that we had it at. And then we can do a real good highlight on that as soon as we take this off. So there we've got our nice highlights. And then we can actually emphasize that a little bit more by freehand. Put in a really nice highlight and again because of the angle that would normally be on the corner I'm going to move it in a little bit just because we don't want to have it disappear in the way of the background This product that I'm using here that I've been cutting my stencils out of it just in case anybody's interested in it. It is called Spray Mask and it's made by I believe it's 3M or yeah I think it's 3M or Avery. It might, it might be Avery. One of those two. I'll have to check into that and I'll let you know. Okay so again shadow is going to be running off the same way. corner to the skull at the end there's there's going to be a lot of different reflections a lot of different plays of light and shadow and and things like that so yeah i hope this uh gave you a little bit of an understanding of how easy it is to really do chrome because it's not a hard thing to do that's for sure and yeah it definitely uh will open up some avenues for people to uh, to try different effects. Uh, and there's so many different ways of doing it. Like I said, if, if there's clouds in the sky, you're going to see the clouds in there. Um, there's just so much, so much that you can do with it. Hey guys, so there you have it, a uh, simple chrome video. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, please leave your comments and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you have any other ideas for, uh, for tutorial videos, how-to videos that you'd like to see, please feel free to let me know on that as well. All right, uh, and I will be back with another video next week. I'm gonna try and upload my videos so that they're available every Tuesday. Uh, it gives me the weekend to work on them, get them edited and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, yeah, like I said, any questions at all, please let me know, concerns, uh, anything like that, suggestions. Uh, I'm open. Now, welcome to my channel again to everybody. Uh, please feel free, like it, uh, share it, uh, view it all the way to the end, and please, 
Um, that will help me grow the channel and help me help you guys learn to be better artists. Uh, if I can. I mean, there's some of you out there, obviously, that are way better than I am. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm just here to help anybody out that needs a hand. And like I said, questions, please feel free. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again with another video next week.